Hi everybody, welcome to Moscone West. This is theCUBE and our coverage of RSA 2023. The keynotes are kicking off. We're here with Sunil Potty, who's the Senior Vice President and GM at Google Cloud. Sunil, my friend, good, good to see you. Thanks for coming good on theCUBE. Good to the see Cube. you again, Dave. Ma making security invisible is what your mission is. You right? heard that term before. You know, I have, <laughs> but how's that going? No, it's, uh, I think one of the things that, I think what I found between my prior life at growth stage companies and something like Google was, Google was always big into this, you know, have big dreams and make it an awesome environment for people to innovate. And I think since the advent of Google Cloud and the enterprise and so forth, I think the one new thing that got added was to act fast while still dreaming big and having fun. And uh, so I think with security, we can afford to now take the long-term view rather than yet another new innovation and so forth. And so with, within the Google umbrella, I think that's what invisible security to us is, can you actually in five, 10 years, materially make a change on the cyber scene? Maybe not in a year, but in 10 years. And can you do that by completely making security as pervasive as possible, but hopefully materially less complex? It, it's probably going to take that long. It's funny, John and I were talking earlier. I think we were actually right here, maybe it was in Las Vegas, talking to Pat Gelsinger, mm. and, and I had asked him, is security a do-over? This is probably five years ago. And he yeah. said, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it kind of is, in a way, a do-over. You know, people talking about zero trust. Now we're going to talk about large language models, but it's hard to, to do over when you have so much technical debt. So yeah, yeah, I think it is going to take that long to yeah, really yeah. rethink it. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But, but how do large language models fit in, you guys make some announcements around there. I'm also curious, because you have the Mandiant visibility now, is how much are you seeing the, the adversaries using foundation models in the, yeah, no, in the no, attack absolutely, vectors? Absolutely, but, yeah, absolutely. We could start no, no, I, I'll start with some basics there. So essentially the way we look at this is, to your point of like, it needs a do-over, and any, any market that needs a do-over, as you know, requires some platform inflections, like mobile, yeah, right? Right. 15 years ago, right? And and cloud was another version of that, even though it took a while to differentiate cloud from hosting. I think in the world of generative AI, the analogy that I use to set the context up is, look, when we did mobile first, everybody had to go from a desktop browser to a mobile browser. Because if your website didn't work in the mobile footprint, you know, my checkout button wouldn't be in the screen, you know, it can't work, right? So you got to do that. The equivalent of that is what we're seeing as chat interfaces or conversational interfaces you know, backed by whether it be Google's Bard or ChatGPT or whatever it is. So we call that layering in generative AI on top of existing environments. But the real inflection point happened with mobile as a platform when you created an app store and you created the ability to create mobile first apps. So you could leverage the camera, do swipe left, right, but create an experience. Overnight it became all about the apps. Yeah. yeah. So and I think the opportunity we see in Google for generative AI in each of these functional areas, and security being one of them, and you'll hear more about this at Google I.O. and so forth, is if you can infuse AI rather than just layer in AI, so that yeah, it can be a chat interface, but every function that you do, oh, I'm parsing logs, can I generate log parsers? If I'm generating code, why not generate the security controls associated with it? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So there's a, a plethora of things if you think through holistically, you can infuse generative AI in every piece of the security workflow. So, so the gist of what we're announcing today, which is based on obviously a lot of the work that Google DeepMind has done, Google Cloud Vertex AI as a platform is, what we've done is we've taken uh, a large language model that we call Palm, which is quite widely used. You know, we've just released a medical version of that called MedPalm. But essentially we've trained the LLM on all of the Mandiant Thread Intel data, the Google Thread Intel data, so that you can actually create, quote unquote, an industry first security LLM. But ensconce it in an enterprise grade platform that we're calling AI Workbench, Security AI Workbench. And the whole idea is, independent of any products that are built on top of that from Google, a customer could start prompt engineering a security use case on this platform while keeping their data as their data. And suddenly they have access to a security LLM on an enterprise grade infrastructure trained on all this data. So that's the first step. Is so the corpus approach. is, is the Mandiant corpus and the Google. Google corpus, to start, with, together. to start with. Which, and then part which of the- happened pretty quickly, I mean, when yeah. did the Mandian acquisition close? It closed last in November. Fall, right? yeah. Closed in November, and you know, 
outside of the AI part, obviously, we've been rapidly integrating Mandy and Threat Intel incident response into the platform. So the, you know, related but discrete is that independent of generative AI, our sort of strategic synergy between Mandiant and Google Cloud uh, Security was the following. You'd, Mandiant is sort of like the premium incident responders for yeah. day zero, awesome threat intel. Imagine if you could empower every one of those frontline responders with the best scalable security data lake that captures all your events, best, best analytics, and provides the best proactive remediations so that you don't have to necessarily come back with the same issue downstream, right? And it turns out that in the world of AI, what has happened is that we're now taking the security LLM, and in each of the products, whether it's Mandiant products, like Mandiant Threat Analytics, or Chronicle, or any of our products, we're now building AI capabilities based on this security AI workbench, because now essentially every time a customer or a Mandiant responder is using you know, a tool, it's actually sourcing like auto detections based on this large language model. And every time somebody sort of helps a customer in the front line, you know, our hope, this is the first example of invisible security is, is uh, you know, it's pretty hard to prevent patient zeros, even though people talk about day zero and all that. Uh, but I think with generative AI, we have a chance to prevent patient ones. And what I mean by that is, we are there in the front line, we find something out in the wild, we triage it, we try to remediate it, but if the rest of our customers are hooked up on the same value chain on the same platform, the input is given to the large language model to say, hey, you know, this new thing is in the wild, every frontline defense and every other customer that has the same Chronicle platform can level up to detect that now. Mm. So therefore, there won't be a patient one necessarily. Okay, so I, I get the design in piece. So the week ahead of our RSA, you get inundated. Yeah. with data from, you guys did the double supply chain hack, which sure. Mandiant wrote that up. CrowdStrike came up with a study, Palo Alto came up with a study. Everybody's got and one of the, yeah. it, Everybody Everybody's does, and it's, it, yeah. it's very useful. Yeah, yeah. You got to take a bath yeah, in the yeah. data. One of the things, yeah. and I want to ask you about sort of design in versus how a practitioner can use it. Maybe that's just invisible. Maybe that's the, yeah, the point. Yeah. But I, one of the reports, I think it was Palo Alto, said that 5% of the alerts, or sorry, 80% of the alerts come from 5% of sure. the rules. So it's the same old, same old, sure, sure, right? right? And so this, and, and there's got to be a way to prioritize those. Uh, presumably AI. Can you know, do I that. mean, I mean, if you just think about it, AI in general had some stages. Like we really boiled it down to first principles. It had identification, classification, and then generation. So generative AI is the third part. But if you really used AI, one of the examples was, hey, I would classify things as patterns, and in security, it would classify things as high value versus low value. And generation actually built on top of that to say, hey, what, can I actually pr generate the code for you so that you're not doing the job, right, for all these rules. So writing these rules are pretty hard. So, you know, can I actually generate the rules for you? But the classification of high priority versus low priority was actually pre-LLM in reality. Because, you know, there was AI before LLM-based AI, right? Yeah, so, sure. So I think, but, it, but if you, you know, kind of to address some of that uh, report uh, questions and all, I think the way we looked at this problem was, look, there's like the three T's of security that is always top of mind. Threats, toil, and talent. You started talking about threats. And when you look at the threat problem, it, with LLMs in particular, good actors can become better, bad actors become way worse. Just because of the way that mm -hmm. LLMs can actually impersonate phishing sites, they're already doing more that. Capable, recap, meaning, right? Right? More capable, meaning, right? More capable, and also they can impersonate a real life phishing vector way more than what you could. Have right? you seen that in the last no, 120 I mean, days? No, is it, is it not, not explicitly at a, at a breach level, but we've seen incidents of it as examples being thrown out. With a signature that has a, a foundation yeah, model behind it. Yeah, I'll give you a simple it. example, right? We released virus total code inside today. Within the first hour, we found a new malware being detected that none of the existing detectors from the community detected, okay? Based on the usage of that, right? So, I think the whole point is, you now get the system working for you, rather than, you know, uh, just people or dispersion of tools, right? So that's the threat part. I think the second part, which we've talked about, is toil, which is really every security practitioner has too many tools. Yeah, you got to have more sure. tools and all that usual stuff. But ultimately, the look, again, 
what we mean by making things invisible is, if code could be generated, why can't you generate security controls? Why can't you generate compliance controls with it? And every time some of that is generated, why can't you generate the test for it? Too? And so we have a series of capabilities there that we're building in. A good example of that is open source, right? I mean, you know the double supply thing. In fact, that is a huge vector. So what we've done is we've pulled a version of GitHub, send it through our pipeline, we do fuss testing, we do a whole bunch of vulnerability testing, and then we give it back to the world to say, hey, this is our assured version of open source. But that pop, uh, pipeline, currently we used to do it using our own tests. Now we use LLMs to generate tests into the supply chain. So that's another example of where LLM-based technology is actually, you know, hopefully making it non-linear in the surface area of cars. So you generate the test, do you, do you, does it actually do the test? Because a lot of people just don't test, because it's, and, and I they're think afraid to test. But, but here's the, and it sort of cuts over into the last dimension of talent, right? So when you look at the security practitioner, as you were saying, there's two types. There is the tier one, tier two, or whatever, specialist. And then the talent problem exists because you can't get enough of that talent. But in reality, every customer, every company has developers, business analysts. So the art of the possible and the talent, which is sort of related to the prior question is, could you get everyone who's not a security specialist to help you in a security outcome? As an example of that is, hey, if I'm a developer, people talk about DevSecOps and all, but in reality, could you actually programmatize the ability for you to generate a, just like you have unit tests, you should have security tests. Mm. Right, you just think about that construct. It took a while though, right, for unit testing to become a programmatic paradigm. So I do believe that this is the lowest hanging fruit, is I think security in the life cycle of a developer and an operator is going to become like unit tests. And then the next step is while you use that to democratize a larger value of the surface area of talent, these tier one, tier two operators with some assistive capabilities. Like, you know, you take the Mandiant Thread Intel, you summarize it, you give it some insights. Like, you know, you don't have to have a PhD or be a Mandiant specialist. Then suddenly your tier two analyst can become like a Mandiant analyst. Yeah. So just like generative AI can make a lousy writer a decent writer, and a really, a really good writer an even better awesome. writer, the that's same exactly thing applies in, that's exactly in right. security. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I think that's fundamentally how you break the talent gridlock is to do both these steps, right? Because you still need the specialization, but at the same time, you need to find a way to kind of bring more people to help you with security outcomes. And, and I like the concept of invisible, because you know, I don't know if Google says this, but a lot of vendors say, you got to spend more. And, and we do spend more, every year we spend more. I know we spend hundred billion dollars or more, and the problem seems to get worse. So mm. I don't think spending is the answer. <laughs> it's, 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 I think do-over and rethinking Maybe. It's yeah, a I mean, I think, I think again, if you apply the analogies to mobile and cloud, and again, I pr personally don't have a good answer generally to this, but <laughs> I think intuitively it feels like you have to spend, you still have to spend more, but hopefully you're spending more on fewer things that are more platform things that give you nonlinear step function value so that downstream. Big levers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I think we need those, right, in security because it's happened in infrastructure, as we know. It's happened in computing, as in mobile or no. I think in cyber it's time that it happened. So I got to ask the question because everybody knows Google's ahead on AI in the last 20, 120 days, 150 days now have been yeah. insane. Do you, I don't know if you can answer this question, yeah. but it's hypothetical. Would you have, do you think you would have announced these things at RSA were it not for all the hype around large language models. So yeah. would you have waited? You know, great people question. saying, hey, great. pause No, a no, no, bit. I think great question. So the work, as you can imagine, has been going on for much longer. Yeah, of course. The question of timing it, at least in the security landscape, you know, the way we have had our roadmap internally is we, all these features that you've got, there are quite a few that are not in this list because they fall into this curve of risk and reward. And if you prioritize that two by two, Dave, there's high risk, high reward. There's low risk, high reward, and the other options. Mm. What you're seeing, what we're announced today, are fall into the high reward, low risk. Because it's about threat intel and low summarization. Risk. Yeah, it's low risk yeah. and high reward, right? Yeah. And then, depending on how the uptake is, and then the general awareness, because Google in particular has, you know, overused word, it's great power comes great responsibility. We are a bit more aware of the responsibility portion. 
And that's why you've seen us behind the curve, right? <laughs> Big. So you got a lot to lose. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I think I think but I think like in general, as you've heard now, I think the art of the possible is to make sure that people are aware of all the things we could be doing, but on ramp them a little bit more responsible. Right. right. But I mean, you, like you said, Google's. I mean, you you're Google. I, I remember I was interviewing uh, Robert Gates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Year. It was yeah, mid yeah. last decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I was say, uh, it was naive. I was saying, yeah, but doesn't the United States have the best security technology? Can't we go on the offensive? And he goes, yeah, well, yeah, we do and we can, but we have the most to lose. <laughs> right? yeah, 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 so yeah. We, our infrastructure, you yeah. take that down. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, have to be very yeah, careful yeah, yeah, yeah. about how. Yeah. No, we but I think, this. I think that is the sort of like the art of the possible there, but I can tell you that, you know, um, the inflection point for what I would call high reward, low risk, there's quite a bit of fertile ground across Google that you'll start right. seeing, right. starting with security. So okay, that's a great answer. That's where you focus. Yeah. What about, what are you doing with Accenture? I know that was Yeah, 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 Accenture, was, <laughs> you know, our friends there. Yeah. So, so one of the things that's going on across the world, as you know, is everybody and their dog is building an XDR solution, right? But if you actually look at the buying centers, there's not really an XDR buying center. There is a SIM buying center, you know what I mean? A SecOps buying center and so forth. Yeah, right. So people are pivoting. But in reality, a buying center transition is that there's quite a few customers that are like, look, whether I'm a large bank or a mid-market uh, manufacturing company, maybe I should pivot to a managed offer. Because a managed offer offers a level of warranty, a level of risk management and so forth. Even if it's not all people, a managed service himself. And essentially what we've found is with Chronicle, as a platform that we have intentionally built to basically say, look, we remove, basically security is a data problem, so therefore if security is a data problem, you can't put any limits on data. You can't put any limits on retention. You can't put any limits on cost, you know, things like that, where the prior world of security as a data did that. And so once you unlock that as an architecture, then suddenly every managed services provider that was providing security suddenly has a platform that they don't have to worry about cost. They can provide value, right? So Accenture's basically announcement is, look, globally they've made a strategic decision to partner with Google Cloud. They're replatforming their managed services that they deliver to the global 500 or whatever on this next generation platform. And as part of modernizing their security operations to their customers, they're also going to become the first partner to contribute Threat Intel to the LLM. Okay. Because ultimately, the more data that goes to train the product is what value comes back to the customers. So security's a data problem, I agree. And you, you Google's good with data. Yeah. You start, you got data yeah. at the core we, We're of good business. at storing lots of data, we're good at indexing lots <laughs> of data, we're good at searching through lots of data, you know what I mean. And right. Yeah, and it's at anyway. the core of your yeah, business, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. most companies that's not the case, right? Their data is, you know, as you know, it's in silos. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you see that problem being solved? You, you know what I mean? Is that the data today is locked inside of applications. The, it's inside of business processes. It's not the reverse. It's, and so the answer is everybody says, all right, let's put it into a central data warehouse. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll move it out of those. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. But then you talk about IoT and the edge. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're yeah, not yeah. going to solve that problem by sticking it in a... No, I, th a I do think database. there is a parallel in some ways to the non-security data lakes, lake houses, yeah. you know, construct. Mm -hmm. Right. And there are some dis uh, differences too, because Essentially, the, the, the similarities, Dave, are that, look, at the end of the day, unlike the business data analytics, where there is a business ROI, everything that you do with security events yeah. is risk. Yeah, right? right? Risk reduction. And risk reduction yeah. and regulation compliance, Yeah. right? So what you really don't want is you don't want to pay for that, but the consequences of not doing it is high, right? So that was one of our core fundamental principles was to break that gridlock where you hate paying for a security data link in the past. Because you didn't get the value that you got in a business data link, right? So what we removed, and because we could afford to do that, very few companies can afford to commoditize security log storage at scale. Like we use the same storage that search uses. We use the same computer that search uses. So our cost, our cents compared to dollars of somebody, right? So once you did that, then suddenly the, the world is like, look, uh, let me send all my endpoint data now. Let me send not just two months of data, let me not just send summarize, let me send DNS logs, let me send everything. You take care of it, you index it, you store it, and now you have a national language interface. At your at economics, yes. at Google economics. And sort of fundamentally, I would say that's an example 
of a platform that could potentially, like one example of a cyber platform that changes the game, right? Of how cyber could be done 10 years from now, five years from now. So what's, what's I know the vision is make it invisible, but what's the strategy? I mean, if I compare like Amazon and, yeah. and Microsoft, they seem to be yeah, different yes, ends, right? Example. And, right, and so yeah, Microsoft yeah. wants to compete with CrowdStrike everybody, and everybody, everybody else. Yeah. Amazon, it's like, you know, here it is, yeah, yeah, you know, go, yeah, yeah. and where are you guys? And with the no, 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 I, I, I think the easy answer is to say we're in the middle. Yeah, yeah. That's like but I think say. you are, <laughs> actually. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's good. So I'd say we are on the third vertex of a triangle. Yeah, okay. okay. Fair, right, let me yeah. just tell you what I mean by that. So you've got Amazon, obviously, they've got fries to the burger, right? Everything's like, you come to Amazon and then we'll sort of make you secure and all that. I think Microsoft's done a phenomenal job, in my opinion, at least Satya has done a great job of up-leveling it, yeah, right, making it a first-class citizen. Um, and, but as you said, you know, they're trying to push products in all directions. What we have said is, look, there are many areas that we're not good at. And we want to build a platform approach that the best of breed of those areas can come integrate with us. As an example, Palo Alto with Zero Trust in our product. We were one of the pioneers of Zero Trust, but functionality-wise, there's a nice little complement there. CrowdStrike, Sentinel, one and endpoints. They can integrate with workspace on our side, you know, so forth. Okta and identity and so forth, right? Yeah. We, in fact, even partner with Microsoft and Amazon on Thread Intel with Mandiant and so forth, right? But there are some areas where we have taken an opinionated view, Dave, and like, made it very clear. Like confidential computing. Like confidential computing, yeah. but also this, just this construct that all security data needs to be stored, indexed, analyzed, and then made available to all security apps using one ubiquitous platform. Yeah, in, we're in, pretty good in at it. Google tooling. Yeah, yeah, and that's what Chronicle is. So, so Google Data Store, for example, yeah, would be yeah. an so obvious think, place to so do So we that. call that Chronicle, and essentially, yeah, yeah. that is what we think is one of the four underpinning for all things security operations, whether it be reactive or proactive. Another thing is, look, we, you know, we have a ton of information around the world's threat intel between Mandian and Google. Can I take that, synergize that, and make it available to all the products? Mm. Oh, by the way, we have a, a lot of uh, open source hygiene that we have had to do for our 100,000 plus developers. Can we package all of that open source hygiene so that we just give you know, a city bank or any bank, hey, here's a thousand Java and Python libraries that we have assured. Wouldn't you want to use that? It's the same function at GitHub, but it's made secure, right? And then on an ongoing basis, we kind of keep it up to date. So I think those are the, the points are that we've taken an opinion view on certain fertile markets where we genuinely have 10X. And for the rest, we have a pretty transparent ecosystem. So that there's synergies of one plus one equals three. That uh, uh, last question, on those high risk, high reward opportunities. On, on AI, generative AI? On the generative yeah. AI, yeah, come back to that. Is it likely you will be a, I mean, it's likely you're going to watch the market unfold and see what happens there. You, I presume you're not going to take the arrows in the market. Well, I mean, I think, I, you know, but, I but think, so yeah. is it fast follower or is it like kind of no, see I, what I, happens I'd see th I'd say that in the platform approach to security LLM based stuff, we're already number one in the market. Like nobody's got that. They also don't have the data that we have. You're, you know, making that. We've got to land it now and make something happen in the broader market. But I think because we are out there, independent of whether we are first or second, in this case we happen to be first, I think the adoption of that, Dave, will drive the needle on how much on the risk vector you do. Because if our customers are rapidly deploying it, they're using it to generate detections like virus total and all that, it's only a leap forward to generate remediation. And even when you generate remediation, that's an example of a higher risk, where to actually change your posture on your behalf, right? You can send it through a little bit of a scenario. Hey, validate, Dave knows what he's doing, send it to him to just validate it for a little bit. And then eventually it. take the action. Yeah. But at least you're getting the short circuit done there, right? So within cybersecurity, you, you actually will lead, that is, is your intention is to lead intent. in that, that, is fully that, that quadrant. Yes. No. That's fully Sunil, understood. great to see you, man. Good meeting you, Thanks Dave. so much All right, no, for coming thanks on catching up. the Cube yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time, so. We'll do it again Good soon. Be back. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I think maybe this summer. We'll do it this summer. August. Yeah. This summer. All right. All right. Okay, keep it right there. Dave Vellante for the whole Cube team. We're here at RSA Conference 2023 in Moscone West. We'll be right back. <laughs>